Um, he, after, serving, after serving in the army and the police force, Dr. Amos was called by God uh, into full-time ministry in the year 1981. And I was born in 82. So 1981 is definitely a long time that the Lord, that the Lord has been using Dr. Amos. And so uh, the transition from, uh, from, from, a, from a national army into um, the kingdom army uh, happened uh, in, that, in, that, in that season. And I'm so, we're so grateful uh, for what God has done since then. Uh, through Dr. Amos's life, he has earned a doctorate in ministry from Vision International University in the US, married with two children. Dr. Amos is also the president of Global Missions International. His prophetic ministry became more evident in the nation of Indonesia in its years of transition during the leadership and currency crisis of the late 1990s and its aftermath. God used Dr. Amos to speak prophetically to four successive presidents after the Sohatra presidency. The prophecies proved to be invaluable to the presidents as they needed God's guidance to steer the nation back into a place of stability and progress. And um, I, there's so much more that I can say, but on a personal note, uh, I have been personally blessed um, and, and uh, enriched and, and really, really revived uh, through, through, uh, uh, through my relationship and friendship uh, with, with Dr. Amos. I, I lovingly call him uh, Papa Amos because he's a real father. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians, you may have 10,000 instructors, but very, very few fathers. And so really grateful for fathers like Dr. Amos, um, who, we can, who we can look up to uh, and relate with. So uh, on that note, I just want to welcome Dr. Amos again. And uh, yes, over to you, over to you, Papa Amos. Thank you, uh, Pastor Teller. It's been a joy to join back with you all again. And uh, yeah, uh, I was quite busy from morning uh, all day. Um, just to let you all know that when we turn, when we, uh, I, I was on the 2nd of January, I think I was in uh, Melbourne, Australia, and I was giving a prophecy for Australia. And at the same time, there was a global, global message. And in that, there was a clear prophecy that during this uh, COVID, as it subsides, there will be two nations uh, in war. I didn't hear accurately which nations they are, but that was prophesied and say, we need to pray that God's hand will be upon it so that people be protected and that uh, this uh, war can vibrate into economic situation, instability, political stability. And we don't know what other nations are gonna be involved. My older brother's uh, wife is a Ukraine Jew. My brother has served a lot in uh, this Eastern Europe, especially in Russia. And he has also ministered in Ukraine. We also run a prophetic school in Estonia, which is like two hours drive to Russia. And um, my sister-in-law, we have been talking to her that uh, probably her brothers and sisters should find refuge because it looks like there can be a war. But they were quite uh, cool, but now uh, bombs are in their house, uh, beside their house, and uh, they have gone under the bomb shelter. Subsequently, we do not know what to do. We probably have to give them some refuge somewhere in a different country until everything is settled down, then they can probably go back. They have many lands. Ukrainians are very happy to live in their country because they have lands, they have many ways of surviving. Um, our missionary, my wife's sister, she is in Estonia and that's quite close to Ukraine. In her, church that are in Estonia, especially in Estonia, we have 40% Russians. 
and some of the Russians uh, probably one-sided or more pro-Russian. So uh, one of the major vision is to reach out to these uh, ex Russian blocks to see the salvation coming. And is, so we are actually training people in Latvia, Latvia, Latvia Lithuania, uh, Estonia, Ukraine, and all these areas is our target. And uh, yes, we need to press on to pray not only for protection, but also in this kind of turmoil, the kind of shaking that people are more united as one body. Churches were definitely in persecution. They will not look at differences. They will become united. Not it's the best way to get united, but only persecution helps us to come back to the right principle of coming together. And so we need to pray um, in all of the situation. Uh, there are very good, powerful churches in Russia. I have many friends Asa Mikhail and Larissa and all the team, they are all very good friends to me. Uh, she's also on the set. Hi, Larissa. And so we really have to pray for the church to be united and stand in this time. Um, the September 2018, my prophecy, part of the prophecy was uh, turmoil among nations will continue, natural disasters. In the midst of God, uh, midst of it, God is raising an army with great character, moving in supernatural ability to discern accurately. Those responding will receive a new wine, mm -hmm. and there will be a phenomenal harvest. This is part of the prophecy that was given in 2018 before COVID. <clears throat> so it is uh, so important at this time to be very accurately placed, to discern accurately what's happening in our country and around us and what is the heart of God like and align ourselves in God's perfect will so that uh, our discernment is also accurate so that we may be doing a good thing, may not, but may not be what God wanted to do. So this is uh, so, 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 so accurate, so important. You may be doing a good thing in the wrong place. So um, the setting of spirits is really not an easy thing. Even the New Testament prophets nowadays, prophets, they struggle with Deciding in the spirit. Because deciding of spirits is a lot to do with right or wrong, go or don't go, yes or no. So we really want to talk about the importance of this gift, nature of this gift, how does it flow, and how to prepare ourselves for the second part. And so uh, the importance of the gifts is we need the bit. Uh, the importance of the, we need the ability, number one, we need the ability to discern and identify the source of situations or events or even doctrines thought. So it's so important in this time because when COVID came, everybody went into YouTube. A lot of people went into YouTube and they got excited with this message, that message, but we need to discern in the spirit First thing is to check naturally where these doctrines all come from. What is the background? What's that background doctrine is? And then also to be able to discern. Sometimes you may not know their doctrine by discerning you know right or wrong. So it comes from your conscience and your conscience must be developed well because conscience is the faculty in the spirit man. Now we know that the Holy Spirit indwells us and all of us constantly struggle in the ability to hear accurately from the Holy Spirit in us. We all, in many ways, we uh, depend on uh, 
the spiritual maturity that we have, the word of God we have, well, all of this is uh, absolutely essential. But we need to have the gift of the discerning of spirit, which is in the Holy Spirit inside us, so that we can, in some situation where there's no information, no natural information or no correct information as to what side to take or what decision to take that we begin to realize that, that we realize that uh, with this gift, we are able to dis discern yes or no. And yesterday, I think uh, uh, a lady uh, was talking to me and she wanted to know whether her daughter should go to Australia and study or UK, but her first child is in UK. So the natural inclination is to send her to UK. But she said, I'm still not sure because uh, there are certain subjects, uh, certain things that will be more useful for her in Australia. So I prayed through, I said, I won't take sides. I'll just say what the Lord says. So it's also difficult for prophets to discern. And I said, of course I received, she need to go to Australia, but that will be difficult for parents because one in Australia, one in UK. But in the long run, they will know that they will make the right choice. So now it's up to them. Of course, I'm not going to force them. I just tell what I hear. Number two, we cannot just rely on natural information when making judgments, certain judgment. We need to draw revelation, knowledge, and wisdom from God. And that's what we know that We know that <coughs> Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 that the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation will come upon me. Now ask yourself, do I have the spirit of wisdom operating in me? Do I have the spirit of revelation operating in me? To what level? What degree? Because Paul's prayer was not for prophets. Paul's prayer for every Christian. And am I operating in the spirit of wisdom and spirit of revelation that our eyes be enlightened? How come his light eyes is enlightened? What, what, what was the discipline that he had? He was sold out for God. He was desperate for God. He pressed in. He was consistent. He was soaking in the spirit. He fasted. He prayed. He pressed on. He never stopped. My friend, Akshay David, has gone into a 21 day fast. I appreciate him because he he's here now. And he uh, is, yeah, he's got to make some decisions and certain things in his life and all of that. So he really want to press. So there is an effort on our part before the gift of deserting of spirit operate because it operates from our conscience. And our conscience is a place where we make moral decisions direction, decision, yes, no. And it is in our spirit that the Holy Spirit indwells. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us in, in relationships with directions is always through our conscience. And many people's conscience are in compromise, in, uh, are shallow, are not clear. Uh, um, it's more, uh, con uh, uh, more impacted by culture, rituals, uh, uh, thought patterns are not clear. So the conscience is, and the rules and the laws that are written in the heart uh, may not be all the time from the word of God, but some are by superstition, some by uh, natural inclination or uh, 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 some uh, culture that come from culture or some uh, certain doctrines or the way their people teach. All this can hinder in our decision making and discerning in the spirit. So one thing, something we can de de develop is our conscience part of the spirit man, and then also understand how the discerning of spirits works. Then um, it's good, but uh, it's it's a it's a daily uh, application practicing that slowly becomes sharper and sharper. But in between, your motives must be right, your attitudes must be right, your character must be developed well. The third thing is the things of God can be discerned. Things of God 
can be discerned by our spirit through the help of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse 5 onwards, that uh, with the Holy Spirit, the spirit man is able to discern what the spirit of God is saying. But our spirit also need to be well developed. We need to discern true or false, God or human or devil, accurate or inaccurate. We need to discern that. We need that. It's we are so important. And this gift will help us. This gift will help us to discern right or wrong. Yes or no. Go or don't go. Right judgments. The nature of this gift. It is supernatural insight into the spirit world. And we also see that a Elijah, Elisha faced a circumstance where all the Syrian army has surrounded his place to kill him, to or kidnap him or take him or and a servant says, alas, we are gone. We are surrounded by warriors. And Elisha says, those who are with us are greater than those who are with you. And, and can you imagine your senior pastor telling those who are with us are more than those who are with you? Say, hey, our, our, our pastor, what's wrong with him? Huh? Our our account says the project that we have is 1 million and our account says we only have 100,000. And our pastor says the money with God is more than the money with us. <laughs> All the accountants in, the, in the, the financial directors of financial groups in our church board will be so confused. And they're going back to the income balance and they're saying I don't know whether uh, how the pastor is saying is it hearing from God or not we're not sure where's the money going to come from who is going to give so we really need to hear accurately and then Elisha prays God open his eyes that he can see We pray that it happens. The same prayer given to us. There's one incident in the Bible is in 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. I'll tell you the story. A prophet from Judah, a young prophet from Judah, is sent to Bethel to speak against the altar. Because the false prophets, the false priests were offering uh, sacrifices to the demons. And he prophesied that these priest bones will be burned in this place. And he said, a king will raise, and he's, the king's name is Hosea. God will raise a king. And Jeroboam, the king at that time, got so angry, he said, catch this guy. And when he said, catch this guy, his bone, his hand became stiff. And so uh, Jeroboam says, please pray for my hand. So he prays for his hand and his hand gets healed. Now, Jeroboam is so touched now that this is a true prophet of God and he's operating with such great power. He said, come to my palace. I want to give you something. This young prophet says, God told me that I have to release this prophet of this false worship that's going on and all these priest bones are going to be burned. And as a result, this altar is going to break into two. And true enough, the altar broke into two. And another sign is Jeroboam's hand was become stiff and he got healed. So 
with all of that, he said, God also told me that I'm not supposed to receive anything, but go the other way home. And he left. Even if you give me half the riches of the country, I am going to go the other way. There were some young prophets from Bethel. They were watching all this. And so they went back to their father, who is a senior prophet in Bethel. Now you'll be wondering why God have to use a prophet from Judah when we have a prophet in Bethel. Well, the problem is some of the senior prophets, you know, they become so well trained, they're so experienced that their spiritual walk with God becomes less. Sometimes they can hear accurately, sometimes they give their own prophecies, which can, which can be said as lies. So his uh, spiritual sons, prophets, they came to the father and said, their spiritual father and said, there is a prophet, young prophet from Judah. He has come over and he prophesied against the altar. And he said that this altar will be broken into two and he broke into two. And he says, uh, bones of the false priest will be burnt on that. And then the king tried to stretch forth his hand to catch him and his hand was stiff. And then the man of God prayed and he got healed. And more than that, the king was going to give him some money, some reward. He refused it and went another way. Just give me a minute. I bring my water because I just came in and opened the laptop. The old prophet in Bethel got so excited and he said, where is he? He's on the way back to Judah. He went after him and he met him and he said these words, follow me, come to my house and eat. He said, no, the Lord told me I don't go back. I just go another way and I'm going back to Judah. And this is what the senior prophet said. The Lord told me last night, the angel of God told me that you must follow me to my house. And that was a lie. So this young prophet, because he respect and honor the senior prophet in that nation, his discerning gift, his discerning feelings went down. Why? He honored the senior prophet, respect and honor. But he is also man. We have to discern. God spoke to you. Now he's telling the angel of God spoke to him. Yes or no? Check it out. So he followed the prophet. And while they were eating, suddenly this old prophet got accurate revelation. And he said this, because you disobeyed God in turning back and eating, Therefore, you shall die. Oh my God, when I read that, I broke down and cried. I said, Lord, this is a real innocent young prophet upcoming. He's just coming up in ministry. He gave such an accurate prophecy and it has so much impacted the whole nation. They, all the false prophets are shaken. The false priests are shaken. The king is shaken. And he even said he won't take any reward. And in good heart, he was going. He's an innocent prophet. And when he saw a senior prophet, obviously he will respect him, honor him, submit to him. And uh, he didn't know. He didn't. He, of course, he, he, loyalty, honor, respect blinded his eyes. You see, I mean, you say you should have checked, but you know, he's young prophet, poor thing, you know. But for God is, 
in this world there's good and evil that operates even from good people. So you need to be deciding all the time. What has happened? This young man, when he went back, a lion attacked him, but never kill, uh, never eat him. The lion was there, the donkey was there, the young prophet is dead. And the old man went up to him and saw him dead and took him and buried him in Bethel with a sign there. Such a powerful thing happened and the devil used the senior prophet to tell a lie. And he didn't discern in the spirit. What is, what is your take on this? My take on this is all of us in these last days are going to be shaken in many aspects. And therefore, it is more crucial now than any time else to be discerning in the spirit because the world will come to you, the politicians will come to you, the business people will come to you, the problems that they're facing, the shaking that's taking place, they will come to you and you need to be prayerful. You need to be sensitive in the spirit so that you can give a word. Every Christian can operate in the gift of discerning our spirit and it's so, so important weapon now. So how does this proper uh, gift flows? How does it flow? It's basically supernatural insight to know the truth or to know the evil, what is he trying to do? By spirit of revelation, by word of knowledge, by word of wisdom. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gift of prophecy, interpretation of tongues, all these gifts are prophetic gifts and they can operate at the same time so that you can discern accurately. Because the spirit man need to be, the senses need to be activated so that we can perceive what is happening in the spirit realm. An impression, it can come like an impression in your feelings. You just feel that God's gonna give you something and then it drops into your mind. <coughs> If we, if we dissect and bisect the way I prophesy, you'll be wondering how come he gets so much information in a short while? I also marvel at it because it's not me, it's God. And I have to really plug in in order to release it accurately. Sometimes I'm saying it by faith, just trusting God. So that is why for it to flow in us and through us, our conscience must be clear. There should not be any wrong motives to be more accurate. Attitudes must be right. I remember I was going in Jakarta to pray for a lady uh, sorry, but to speak in a prayer meeting. And a prayer meeting is going to be from midnight, 12 o'clock to three o'clock. There were a group of intercessors in that place, probably about 30 of them. And they were taking me there and it was like 11 something. While I was going in the car, God spoke to me, don't give the message that you have prepared. Once you reach there, teach them on the gift of prophecy, especially guidelines do and don'ts what you can do what you cannot do what is right what is wrong when flowing in the gift of prophecy i was thinking what can you actually say in the middle of the night after 12 o'clock i thought i was going to be talking about intercession prayer but here god says talk about prophecy and soon as i reached in that place as i was teaching how to discern I didn't know that there was a prophetess with the wrong spirit in that group. And between uh, nine o'clock to 12 o'clock, she has given 
all her confusing demonic false prophecies to those people. I was totally unaware. And then now I go in to talk about prophecy guidelines. And when I was sharing, all the 30 people began to realize what, whether the prophecy they're given to them was right or wrong. Of course, many of them were not all manipulated. I was not aware of that. As I begin to teach, as I begin to share, that woman, Jezebelic woman, with the wrong spirit in her, called herself, disguised herself as a prophetess. She was a false prophetess and taken control over this group, taken a lot of money from them, manipulated in their marriage life and other things, which I don't know, but only later I came to know. She was getting angrier and angrier. She, her face, she's a very stout lady and she was becoming from a lamb to a lion ready to devour Amos, Amos. When we were closing in prayer, she came and gave me a big tap on the back. It was painful and then start to prophesy. And she was not prophesying over the nation or over the prayer group. She was just prophesying over me without touching me, but beat me up on the back and telling the whole group, and warning me that I'm a false prophet, I'm too proud, and I'm manipulating everything that is she's evil in, she throw it on me. I was getting angry and angry, and I'm going to blow up, and God said, shut up, keep quiet. She has already done a mess before you came. You have gone and given a balanced understanding. Now the people are no more confused because they can weigh both teachings, both things, and they can discern. So you have done the right thing. It doesn't matter this woman, whatever she speaks will never happen to you. Don't worry. She is a very clear, classic example of a born-again, spirit-filled woman who has a wrong spirit and have become and disguised herself into the prophetic realm as a false prophetess. Uh, she don't say false prophetess, but everything is false. Character is false in her own marriage life, manipulated. A lot of things has already ruined her own life and ruined other people's life by way of prophecy. And how did I get, I got it on the way, I was not aware but discerning a spirit of what subject to talk when I already had a subject. And when I was already, when teaching, I then, my eyes fell on that lady and I was thinking, who is she? Apparently she was the false prophetess. Your conscience must be clear. No wrong motives, no wrong attitudes can come like a vision. It can come like a vision. Discerning our spirit can come in a picture form, in a prophecy, in a dream, in a feeling, in something tugging in your spirit. You can have good feelings, you can have bad feelings. Of course, I had bad feelings in that place. If someone is teaching wrong doctrine, you cannot accept it. Your mind is searching where the wrong is. Sometimes Holy Spirit can reveal to you and you can detect it, but you may not detect it. But you always, when the person start teaching, you always feel this stuck in your spirit, something's wrong. Something is wrong, but you don't know what, unless there's a gifted teacher who can really test that. If there was a devil sitting in that place in one person, because you are sitting there and you can discern there's something wrong, spirit is inside this person. And when you are discerning it, 
the devil knows that you are able to detect by discerning of spirit, the wrong spirit inside that person. Discerning of spirit can enable you to find out what is the source of this teaching. What is the source of this plan? What is the source of these actions? You can see what is behind. Unfortunately, when people are prophesying, it is easy for me to discern how much of it is human, how much of it is prophetic. But when students are doing it, I don't point at them because they are learning. So some of it is a word of encouragement, but they give it as a prophecy. But some of it is quite accurate because they're just learning. We are giving them workshop, helping them to, to prophesy, flow in the spirit. But when it comes to real action, out there in the field. You need to have, be very sensitive to that. Uh, it, does, it does not mean that if you know that this piece of person is giving a false prophecy, you straight away go and stop them. It depends on what kind of authority you have in that place. Number two, is this person your friend? Do you know this person very well? If you know this person very well, after the meeting, you can bring them aside and say that your prophecies was inaccurate. And some people are so afraid to say because they want to keep the friendship. But this person can continue to say the wrong thing. How do we prepare ourselves in order to come to a place where not we can accurately discern? Not only we need to understand more of how this gift operates, but also we need to uh, build a strong foundation. Number one, be very consistent in your worship. If you have difficulty to pray long period of time in a day, you must just be fallen in love with Jesus. Early morning, you get up, you say, God, I love you. Not lip service. You say it from your heart, I love you. I'm dependent on you. You're, you love me. You're my God. You're my savior. Don't come and give colorful work. Good morning, Jesus. I am very glad that I can talk to you this morning. Abba, Father, we know we are sitting on the throne. Don't hear all these beautiful words. He is just your friend. Although all the galaxies and creation and everything belong to him, but when come to you, he's very personal. He flows just like you as a friend. Have you seen people praying out there? Some of the bishops or some top people when they pray. Long winded prayer. I don't know if they are talking to God or they are wanting other people to hear it. This morning, Lord, we are gathered together because you are the most high. The God who died for us 2,000 years ago and you died and you rose up from the dead, and we know that your mighty presence is in this place. Oh, Lord. Oh. Stop it, man. It's simple with Jesus. Mothers, sisters, brothers who are here, just enjoy the fellowship with Jesus. He knows you so well. He knows your vibration. He also knows what you're going to say before you say it on your lips. Be a friend. So that is very important, be a friend. And always, 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 always know that he must increase and you must decrease. Always. If you want to increase, you are digging a pit for yourself. 
He has bought you with a price. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to Jesus. And to be belong to Jesus means to flow in his plan and in his will. Don't come to Jesus with that, with your thought in your mind. Um, I will pray all the prayer, but don't forget my girlfriend. Don't forget uh, the money I need. Don't forget I'm waiting for a better job. Don't forget this. Don't forget that. Rubbish, you're not speaking the right thing. Be very genuine. I've argued with God, no? When God told me that on that day that my wife is going to die, I was driving to the hospital. He loudly said, I'm going to bring Rani home, Christina home. All the way to the hospital, I was like, what do you mean you're going to take her now? The whole church is full of faith. So many senior, senior prophets all prophesied. You also gave me a prophecy that he, she is going to live. And now you say you're going to take her home. What do you mean, David, by that? Then I stopped my prayer and I said, let me talk to the devil. Hello, devil. Listen very carefully. This is my private conversation with my father. He's a source of love. He's a source of wisdom. He's my everything. I love him. I am fallen in love with him. Me and my wife. This is something very private. Don't you think you're going to try to use, if truly my wife is going, you can never use that to accuse God with me. No, no, you won't win. My level of faith has gone up because of my wife's condition and I'm not going to bring it down. Even if my wife goes from where I stop, I'll go higher. Because probably her part is over. Now I have to continue until I see Jesus. Be a friend. And when you're showering, and suddenly you talk about Jesus and a song came. Enjoy the shower with the song that is coming from your heart. And when you're sitting on the throne in the toilet. Jesus is not standing outside the toilet. He is inside your spirit. Enjoy your communication. Always, Paul says, unceasing, which means always connected with him. Always conscious. I've developed inside myself, always conscious of his holy presence inside me. Even when I'm doing wrong, I'm very conscious of his presence. That makes me to repent fast. We're not perfect. We all make mistakes. But he stays there 24 hours. So when you have built up this as a companion who is with you all the time, whether you're in the woods, you're walking or you're cooking or anywhere, you're always in communication. You will never feel condemned if you didn't spend one hour on your knees, but you spend the whole day with him. I'm not saying stop the one hour kneeling, but that's the best you can do, but don't forget the other days, the other time. Because you love God, you want to give him a special time for him. But other than that, other times, keep tuned. Why? When you keep this consistent, discerning of spirit works very accurately. Because you're going to your workplace, discerning of spirit works. You're going to your neighbors, discerning of spirit. You're going to church. You're going to, uh, uh, for a holiday, discerning of spirit. So everywhere it's working so that every step, is ordered by the Lord. Be conscious of his presence all the time. Deal with your pride. Deal with your greed. Deal with your motives. Deal with your attitudes. Understand God's character. Understand his ways. If Jesus was in your shoes, how will he respond? Oh, I'm like this. You are like that. But if Jesus is not like that, you have to change. These are all foundations 
that makes your conscience become more vulnerable for the gift of discerning your spirit to operate. Of course, that's everything. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, test the spirits. Because we want to unmask the tri trickery of the devil. <coughs> so that you can... Paul says, we know the vials of the devil. Don't give a foot for the devil. Learn from your mistakes. We, our discerning is not always accurate. Learn from it. So when you learn from it, you are humble, you learn, you're teachable, then you get better, better, more accurate. <coughs> Most women are more intuitive. The husband comes with a business deal and tells his wife, hallelujah, I got a new business deal. I don't need to pay, put any, any funding. My friend is putting all the funding, but the profit, I got 30%. So he said, this is my friend who is the investor. Your wife looked at his face and didn't shake hands, didn't smile, went to the kitchen. <coughs> And then you come to the kitchen and you scold your wife. What are you doing? Why didn't you shake your hands? Why didn't you smile? She said, my conscience says this guy is not a right guy. He's going to cheat you. And the husband said, do you know him? I don't know him from Adams. Were you his schoolmate? No. Okay, where are you getting this information? I'm not sure. So do, can I rely on what you're saying? Because, because he's, paying, he's putting all the funding. I'm getting 30%. I don't know. I cannot say much. All I can say is not the right guy. He's going to cheat you. I asked you, is he your schoolmate? He said, no. Do you know him before? No, no. And I asked, did God tell you? I'm also not sure. So I'm not going to follow you. This is a good thing that's coming my way. I believe this is God because I check everything. He's really a financially stable guy and praise God, I'm going to go ahead. Three months later, he come with a papaya face, long face. And then the wife asked him, what happened? Oh, the guy cheated me. Actually, he took from me 5,000 in advance. I told you, I told you, I told you from the beginning. And he said, I also asked you, I asked you, I asked you, where did you hear? Is it from God? You're not sure. So wife is getting intuition, but not sure where she's getting. Husband uh, uh, moved by all the natural information also. So how do we discern? So I've given you some foundation, but it's all have to be practiced every day. Increase radical change. My radical change started with when I was a policeman every day, three hours after work and every day, one meal a day for one whole year. That therapy caused my spirit senses to be activated. I got no clue. I, I wasn't even an elder or deacon. I was just a mature believer. Uh, I think I was going for a cell group training, cell leader training. That's all. But I only based myself, my sheep hear my voice. So it is my prayer. So more soaking in the spirit. Learn, make mistakes, learn from mistakes. Put your right hand on your chest on a pray for an activation. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. As Paul prayed for the church, that our eyes of the spirit will be enlightened, that the spirit of wisdom will come upon us, that the spirit of revelation will come upon us. I release your power. I release your anointing. 
the power of God, activate them right now, Lord, so that they can see in the spirit. More so, I pray the gift of discerning of spirit begin to be activated in our spirit, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, so that every decision there is accurate discernment. We'll learn from mistake, but I pray today, everyone, everyone who is listening will experience an activation. And in the coming days, they will experience the flow of the spirit, the pressing of the spirit, the revealing of the spirit, and they will grow into it. I release it in Jesus' name. And everybody say it together, amen. Amen. Over to you, Pastor Tara. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, so famous. Any questions, anybody? If you have any questions, please free feel please feel free to drop your questions in the in the chat box. Uh, just want to give you a few minutes to to do that. If you have any questions at all. <clears throat> 